Who do you have at number two? Because I tasked you, and for the listeners out there, I don't know who Justin picked, so I'm going to hand the mic over to him, and he's just going to take it from there, and I'm just going to respond to it. So what what I'm noticing with this exercise is it's really fun how many reasons that there are to be excited, and mm-hmm. you know we picked 13, you know, kind of in homage to the last 13 seconds of the game and and something to look forward to. Um, Mm -hmm. but trying to figure out, you know, who I want to talk about and what order should we be doing them? And there's just so many things to be excited about. So I'll start with that. Um, Mm -hmm. but for this week's episode, I wanted to talk about Mr. Toe Drag Swag himself, my guy, number 13, Gabriel Davis. Um, just a ton to like about this young man and, Mm -hmm. you know, there, the, I'll start by saying there's a lot of debate out there of like, is Gabriel Davis ready to be a wide receiver too? You know, we did this last year. Is he ever going to be a true wide receiver too? Bob, I don't personally care what number receiver we give any of these players. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm just glad he's on my team. And the way Josh Allen moves the ball around and... You know, somebody wants to take away Stefan Diggs in a week. That's fine. Our other guys are going at it. So the designation of what number on the roster he is doesn't really matter to me all that much. Um, mm-hmm. So we, we saw him last year have this this booming rookie season, and he looked real intriguing, and he was making big play after big play. And then, you know, we talked about it a lot on this podcast, kind of a quieter, slow start to the season, You know, he Mm -hmm. had a a little bit of injury concerns in there. Um, So he ends the season with um, 35 receptions on 63 attempts, uh, 549 yards and six touchdowns, which, you know, Mm -hmm. overall, not crazy eye popping numbers. But remembering that in the system, he is wide receiver four. Um, But then we have the, you know, the recency bias in and something that I can't get out of my head. And and that's those postseason numbers he put up. Right. This guy had 10 receptions on 13 targets, 242 yards, and five touchdowns. Now, I know four of those touchdowns came in, in one game, and like 200 yards of it came historic in one game. Historic yeah. performance. So. Yeah, this, historic game. You can't take that right, away. Right, exactly. And this is the kind of guy where, you know, it – Depending on what we do, rounding out the receiver group, whether he ends up at, you know, three or four, you know, we have some, is McKenzie coming back? Is Beasley coming back? All that stuff is kind of minimized to me a little bit, knowing that up here we got Diggs and down here we got we got Gabe Davis. And filling mm-hmm. in the talent around that, it it already starts shaping up to be a really exciting group. So I, I love Gabriel Davis and I'm so happy that you picked him and we all knew that he was going to be on this list. And I I was just kind of wondering when, when you were going to do it or if I was going to do it first, but, uh, I, a couple things to unpack there. There are a lot of reasons to be excited for the Buffalo Bills next season. So there's a chance we're probably not going to have a couple people on this list who definitely deserve to be on this list. It's just kind of just how it shook out. And Justin and I aren't talking to each other. We're just kind of going back and forth, ping-ponging. So if he wants someone on this list that I personally don't have on there, we don't have the opportunity to talk Too about bad. it. So if, yeah, if you have someone on this list that you think should be on there, feel free to reach out to us, uh, you know, comment. Let us know who you think should be on this list. I'm, I'm more than happy to talk to you about it. And more than likely, you're going to be right. Like, there's no wrong answer to this, in my personal opinion, unless you pick someone super egregious, which I'm not going to name any names. But uh, getting <coughs> back Hawk. to Gabriel Davis. <laughs> yes, yes, Mr. Inconsistent. But uh, getting back to Gabriel Davis, I thought those stats that you put up really just show how effective he was. Now, you said, and this sounds a little you know, wrong because – he didn't really have eye popping stats, but when you extrapolate his stats over the last couple of games, in to your point to the playoffs and a couple of last regular season games, 
you, you know, Emmanuel Sanders comes out, Gabriel Davis gets a little more snap count, and you see this man start to produce over and over. And next thing you know, he's getting two touchdown games and seeing the ball a lot more. Stefan Diggs, he gives uh, Gabriel Davis gives a lot of praise to Diggs because he has those opportunities because Diggs is Diggs. Is so I just I'm very excited what this offense can do, knowing that Gabriel Davis can be a potential number two wide receiver. There was a lot of debate in the soft season saying like, you know, Gabriel Davis does what he can because he's a number four wide receiver or a three or four in this offense. Well, now when Emmanuel Sanders went out, you saw Gabriel Davis get those number two roles and it looked like it worked out pretty well. So I'm pretty excited to see what he produces in a, with more opportunities and more snaps under his belt. So I think your choice here for Gabriel Davis is well-deserved for this man. He's a young man, only completed two years into his rookie contract. We got two more cheap years with him, so that's awesome to know. And another thing is is that he was a fourth-round pick, I believe. Mm -hmm. I might be mis... You know, might not be saying that correctly, but that's great value for a fourth-round pick. And he's starting to, you know come around and everyone likes to talk about year three being the year that big things happen. Well, I, I already saw, saw that potential in year two at the end of year two. So lots to be excited about with Gabriel Davis and who knows, maybe we only saw the beginning of his ceiling and there's, there's more he could fill into. Yeah. A, a couple of the other things that I really like about him that, you know, he gets kind of lost when you're just looking at, you know, raw stats. And one of the things being, you know, we'll start with those sideline catches. Um, you don't see a ton of players that can make those grabs. The focus it takes and it, mm -hmm. you know, he's shown that it's not like, oh, this happens once in a while. Like he's making those plays consistently. And it seems like a lot of the opportunities that he gets are coming in like these big third down situations Mm -hmm. And he seems to have a really good chemistry with Josh Allen. You know, when that when the first play breaks down and you're moving through your second, third option and Josh is rolling to the right and somebody's got to come back to him and get open. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I think when you're just looking at like the numbers, you know, you kind of need that little reminder of like, you know, how some of these plays came to happen. And it's not just, you know, well, he ran a. 12 yard out and Josh hit him with the ball. Like no, a lot of these plays are, you know, outside of structure and him knowing where he has to get for, get to be for Josh Allen to find him with the ball. And that's kind right. of leading to these, you know, third and seven. And all of a sudden you got this 25 yard reception to Davis on the sideline where either he mm -hmm. was going to catch it or nobody was going to. 